Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, we're going to have another lesson today uh, in our subject, philosophy. Uh, yeah, we, uh, this time we're going to have a very convenient, I hopefully it's convenient to you, because I, ha I, I make a pre-recorded lesson or video lessons by part. So in chapter two, uh, unlike before, in chapter one, we discussed everything like that was almost 40 minutes, no? And this time we're going to have it by part, like lesson one, lesson two, lesson three, and lesson four. That is for chapter two, no? So that uh, you, it won't be very hard for you to be, to, to, to be watching this video, like you will not get bored because of its very lengthy discussion. No? This time uh, we're having it very short now. So uh, we're going to discuss freedom and morality, specifically on the concept of freedom and moral acts. No? When you talk about freedom and morality, we, we, we sometimes think of Immanuel Kant because he's the one who actually proposed this particular principle on freedom and morality or the relationship between freedom and morality. No? Uh, in Kant's philosophy, Freedom is defined as a concept which involved in the moral domain at the question, what should I do? No, And in summary, and that moral law is only that, for example, I know myself as a person. No, Kantian freedom is closely linked to the notion of autonomy or we, we have freedom or we have authority over ourselves, No, which means law itself. Thus, freedom falls obedience to a law that I created myself. So me and me alone. I'm going to ma make my own standard or I'm going to, to set my own parameters of what should I do and what will I do and what I want to do, no? It is therefore respect its commitment to compliance with oneself. Practical reasons makes uh, laws and requirements of free beings or more precisely, the causality of free beings. Thus, practical reason is based on freedom. It is freedom, no? Phenomena in the Kantian thought are subject to the law of natural causality. Each event is the effect of another and so on to infinity. Unlike the phenomenon of man, the uh, what do you call that? Um, the moral rule is free, such as it has the power to self uh, to self start condition. Kant ethics is mainly based on concept of free will and autonomy. So we're going to discuss that one one by one later, no? According to uh, Kant's morality and freedom, to act freely is to act autonomously. To act autonomously is to act according to the law I give myself. Meaning, you are the ones, yes, you are free whatever you wanted to do, but you need to set your own parameter. No? That means our freedom is not really absolute because, yes, you make your own parameter, but According to Kant, acting freely and acting morally are one and the same thing. Make sure that whatever you want to do and whatever you make decision on the decisions or actions that you want to take and make, uh, make sure that it is moral. Because according to Kant, your freedom and morality are one and the same thing. So make sure that whatever you, you, you do is also moral. No? This is the central notion of Kant's um, concept of freedom. For Kant, acting freely or autonomously and acting um, morally are one and the same thing. The capacity to, to autonomously in this manner, to act autonomously in this manner, gives humans that special dignity that things and animals do not have because we have, uh, as, as, as human beings, we are a rational being, no? We, we, when you talk about rational being we know how to reason out unlike human uh, unlike animals they do not know how to reason out no? respecting this dignity requires us to treat others not as means to an end but as ends in themselves uh ladies and gentlemen if you want to arrive at a proper understanding of kant's notion on moral law and connection between morality freedom and reason let us examine this contrast now uh Number one, one contrast is duty and uh, duty versus inclination. So most of the time, this is equitable to the concept of morality, duty versus inclination. Example, uh, only the motive of duty, acting according to the law I give myself, confers moral worth to an action. Any other motive, while possibly commendable, cannot give an action uh, moral worth. No, The second notion is um, autonomy versus heteronomy. 
autonomy versus heteronomy is equitable to the concept of freedom. No? So, uh, for a while, uh, freedom, uh, what, how are we going to, to discuss that? So, for example, I am only free when my will is determined autonomously. If I want to do this thing, so I am only really free. No, If also my will or moral act is also in consonance with what I want to do. Governed by the law, I give myself. Being part of nature, I am not exempt from its laws, and I am inclined uh, or compelled to act according to those laws or act heteronomously. No? My capacity for reason opens another possibility, that of acting according to laws other than the laws of nature, the laws I give myself. This reason Pure practical reason legislates a priori. Priori means regardless of all empirical ends. That is autonomy versus heteronomy or equitable to the concept of freedom. The last notion on moral law is the concept of categorical and hypothetical imperatives. No? Or most of the time, that is equitable to the concept of reason. Whatever you do, you we always have a, a reason to to. Why, 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 why we are doing that, no? Kant acknowledges two ways in which reason can com command the will, the, the two imperatives, the categorical and the hypothetical, no? Categorical imperative is non-conditional, while hypothetical imperatives is conditional. Ibig sabihin, uh, kung gagawin mo ang isang bagay, tapos you are thinking of the possible consequence of your action, that you are, you are, you are making the hypothetical imperative. Meaning, alam mo kung ano yung consequence ng action mo. Alam mo kung ano yung magiging resulta ng action mo. However, in categorical imperative, most of the time, ito yung palaging, uh, palaging uh, what do you call that, mindsetting natin mga Filipinos, not just, I think, Filipinos, but uh, all of us human beings, that sometimes uh, we don't think of the consequences of our action. So long as we're doing this thing because we think that it is good. What matters most is the matter of the action, not the form of the action. Ibig sabihin, what matters most is our purpose of our action, no? not the, 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 the result of our action. So that is categorical imperative. Again, categorical imperative is non-conditional. You are not thinking of the possible consequences of your action. You are not thinking of the possible results, results of your action. No? Bahala na, gagawin ko ito. Hypothetical imperatives is you are very, very decisive. Like, for example, uh, you are really thinking of what if gagawin ko to? Ito yung magiging resulta, gagawin ko pa ba o hindi? That is hypothetical imperatives, no? So, hopefully you have understood that uh, during our online classes by the fourth week, uh, we're going to have some um, clearing house of ideas on this, on the different topics we discuss, uh, especially in the uploaded videos because we cannot interact here, no? Yun, uh, the next part that we need to talk about is the role of freedom in morality. Now, the role of freedom in morality. Uh, the personal aspect of morality, which might more properly be called ethics, is about the cultivation of virtue, the development of character traits so that choosing the good becomes a matter of habit. But a person, in order to be truly virtuous, must be free to cultivate these virtues or not. If you have all these virtues, you have presented all these values and virtues for yourself, you need to be free as to, um, to cultivate it or to do it, to follow it, to possess it, and to show it, to express that other people or not. You are free to do it, no? However, you need to, according to Kant, you need to emphasize these things. There is no virtue in being temperate when you are being forced not to indulge. Not to indulge. Even if um, you, you, you need to say something, even if you need to confront someone to say something about a particular thing, and by the time you are being forced not to do it, there is no virtue accord, according to, to Kant. No, There is no virtue on that. So, Kasi according to Kant, you need to be free to do it so long as you're doing it morally. Meaning, if you need to confront other people, you need to think that you are confronting this person very, 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 very kindly and very, with, with morality, with, uh, with all your moral standards. No? There is no virtue by the time some people will actually force you not to do it, no, according to Kant. 
Second, there is no virtue in being charitable when someone is forcing you to give up what is yours. For example, um, in solicitation, uh, magsusolicit yung ibang mga grupo and then pupunta sa iyo. Tapos yung solicitation ay may nakaset na standard na dapat magbibigay ka ng 10,000. There is no charity in there. It's not generosity because you are being forced to give a particular amount. You are being forced to really give up your your possessions. No? There is no virtue in there. Meaning, if you want to give something, it must be coming from your heart and it must be coming from your mind to give uh, uh, whatever or uh, no matter or regardless of the amount you give. No? But if you are forced to give really this particular amount or even if you don't want to give and then you are forced to give, there is no virtue about it according to Kant. Because a virtuous man must also be a free man. Ibig sabihin, uh, if you are a virtuous man, kung mabuting tao ka, you also need to be a free person, a free man, a free human being. So you decide based on your own virtues, uh, based on your own moral standard. You act based on your own moral standards. You act as a free man, no one should dictate you what you need to do. But according to, to, to Kant, Immanuel Kant, yes, you are free, but you have a responsibility to be moral, to be a moral person. No? So that's the role of freedom in morality. Second, freedom as the foundation of moral act. It is our foundation of making our moral acts. It's freedom. No? According to Kant, freedom is the power rooted in reason and will to act or not to act, to do this or that, and so to perform deliberate actions on one's own responsibility. That means every action you choose further determines your character. So that means, yes, we are free to do whatever we wanted to do, but take note that whatever you express and whatever you show to other people, whatever you act, whatever you decide, whatever you show, how you, how you show yourself would determine who you are. No? So that means your freedom is not limited. You need to act morally. No? Again, next is freedom and free will. It can only be talked about our freedom has limits. Now, well the, for example, huh? well, the existence of um, freedom is a central premise, premise in Catholic morality. We are not all equally free. There are many possible limits to our freedom, both external and internal. So external is the freedom factors given and showed by other people. No, external factors and internal factors is the, the virtues uh, being shown to you uh, is within you already. That means, yeah, freedom and free will. Um, it, our freedom has limits. No? Kung free will, when you talk about will, it's moral action. Now, if your moral action is in consonance with your freedom, then that then there you are. No, that means it only it only shows that your freedom has limits. What is the requirement of true freedom, anyways? Now, according to the Bawi, this is very very common. True freedom is dependent upon truth. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. According to John eight thirty two, example, lying to a teacher or to your friends, no, it's not really true freedom. Lying, even white lies, is not even true freedom because still you lied. True freedom is oriented toward the good. We should not understand freedom as the possibility of doing evil, meaning you have a responsibility to really um, do. Moral acts only. Doing evil is not anymore your responsibility and it is, it is not anymore part of freedom. Evil enslaves us and diminishes our ability to be free. True freedom requires responsibility at the end of the day. Meaning you, we are all free. However, it requires so much responsibility. No, you are responsible to only be showing the goodness. You're responsible to be only expressing the goodness of you and not to do or show evil things to other people because evil enslaves us and diminishes our ability to be free. That means requirement of true freedom, uh, evil thing is not part of it. 
you know human acts versus acts of humans this is very interesting because um example huh? human acts make use of knowledge and free will uh, for example uh, free will and your knowledge is for example you wanted to pray to god uh, you are going to love your enemy you're going to sacrifice for others that these are human acts no acts of humans do not make use of our intellect or will knowledge for example breathing sneezing like yung uh, gusto mong huminga gusto mong uh, matulog blinking these are these are acts of human that does not need your intellect or your knowledge no however human acts makes use of our knowledge like um, you want to do this you really have those reasons to do that no that this that's the difference between human acts and acts of humans um that is our first part that's quite um uh short only short discussion hopefully you have understood everything now our first our activity is about um of course still you are going to comment your name and your section in the comment section of this um of this video uh for your attendance second is uh please answer in your own words uh, as a free person what are my responsibility uh, what are my responsibilities no as a free person what are my responsibilities give us at least five answers only and um um as usual those who are under me please uh, submit that one in our uh, google drive so still write that one in a very very clean sheet of paper and then submit that one there in our google drive no again as a free person what are my responsibilities so give at least five answers for that no hopefully you have really understood our discussion today um please stand by for another video lesson um yeah later i'm going to upload that one no thank you and god bless everyone